Welcome. You are listening or watching Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today I'm joined with a couple of guests, and I'm not going to tell you who they are yet because you're only going to know this early if you're watching. You're going to have to wait. But today I'm joined by two guests, and we are here to talk about fostering community connections, which is going to be really fun. Stick around. Uh, I just want to mention to uh, any new listeners or viewers that Whistlekick uh, Martial Arts Radio is only one of the things that we do at Whistlekick. We have all sorts of stuff that we do. And if you go to whistlekick.com, you can find a myriad. I love that word. I just... I don't know. I just came to me a myriad of things that we are involved with. You can buy apparel. I've got, you know, sweatshirt. I've got this cool whistle cake hat. You can buy t-shirts and sweatpants and all kinds of stuff. We have training programs. If you want to be faster, if you want to be more flexible, if you want to be stronger, we have programs available there for you to, to check out. Maybe you, maybe books is your thing. We have a ton of books. We have a whole book division. There's all sorts of stuff you can check out, whistlekick.com. Maybe your school wants to join Whistlekick Alliance uh, and reap a ton of benefits from that program. All of that information is going to be there at whistlekick.com. If you want to learn more about the show, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio is the place to go. You're going to find transcripts transcripts of every episode you're going to find show notes on stuff we put all kinds of stuff on there <clears throat> for every episode we've done we're up over seven uh, 970 episodes at this point we are cracking up getting closer and closer to 1000 episodes uh and my two guests that are joining me have definitely helped us get there and so we appreciate that and so without further ado i want to welcome our two guests first guest uh, I was going to do drum roll, but then I realized if I hit the table, it's going to be really loud on the microphone. So I'm going to do drum roll on my chest. The first guest, <laughs> Kelly Thomas. I am not going to drum roll on my chest, but no, that's <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Kelly, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. <laughs> and our second guest, who <laughs> perhaps holds the, the distinction of being on the most episodes outside of Jeremy and I, will be Mr. <laughs> Craig Wareham. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> so, as you can tell, audience, we're going to have a good time today, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, this episode, Fostering Community Connections, I thought about this this week after uh, Marshall Summit ended. Uh, we're recording this the weekend following the event. And this week I spent a lot of time going around to the businesses that I worked with to sp help sponsor and be a part of the event and give out little thank you, little thank you gifts and things. And it really got me thinking about how the relationships that I have worked to foster within our community has really helped the event and ultimately any martial arts that I teach really helped grow the event and those community connections that I've, that I've worked towards gaining has really, really helped. And I thought, you know what? I think that we could do uh, a good episode on how we have done that, how we did, you know, how I did that within the city of Keene um, and Craig and Kelly, how you guys have worked to incorporate as much as you can and any other thoughts or ideas on how to, foster these community connections within the communities that they're in. So Craig, I'm going to throw it to you first. I know that you do a lot of outreach within that, your area. So can you talk just a little bit about that? Yeah. So where I am kind of on the seacoast in New Hampshire, there's all sorts of opportunities to jump in and help out in some facet, right? Um, every, I feel like every town or, or city has a need, that, that a martial artist can assist with. So, you know, some examples of things that we do um, as part of our school and, and that I personally do, um, we worked, I sat for many years as the president of the DARE board um, for our town. So I would go in and help raise money or, you know, things like that for the DARE program that uh, the extra police department would run. Um, I would jump in and help out small businesses once in a while, either through a networking where it's like, hey, give me your business card or whatever, right? That's a pretty standard one. But one of the things that I found was the most impactful was just going into a store or, or whatever and just saying, hey, this is who I am. You know, I'm Craig Warren. I run Karate International Nexter. And um, 
I'm just curious, what can we do to help you? How, you know, what, what can I do to be a benefit to the community? And it's easy for me in this town because I grew up in this town. Mm-hmm. So there's already kind of that homegrown. I know most of these people and have for most of my life. Um, but I think that that's really important. When martial artists think about being out in the community, sometimes it's it's focused on a, how can I get more students in my school or how can I get that impact? And if you flip the script and just say, how can I serve my community? Your community is going to recognize you for that first. Hmm. And I think that's, that's the most important yeah. part. Yeah, that's great. Um, I would agree for sure. And, and, you know, the thing that really struck me that you said that I want to make sure to touch on is you went into a business and talked to them in person. And I think yeah. that, that aspect can't be overlooked. Um, and so I will, we'll touch on that a little bit more, but Kelly, how about, how about yourself? Anything you have done yourself to, to help foster these connections? Um, one of the things, uh, I do is I I travel and I do a lot of after school programs or go into different, um, so I go to them. Um, I go to preschools. Um, I just started a, a senior center class, which is really cool. Um, and uh, that way, you know, I get to see more people and kind of pass the word around. When we have events um, and we sell food at the events, um, it always goes to a local charity. Mm. Um, so uh, that money helps there. We do our um, yearly uh, uh, breakathon, um, where it's like a walkathon, except students, you know, break boards to earn their pledges. Um, we always pick three. Um, charities because I teach in three um, counties um, in Vermont. Um, and the last three years, we've raised $15,000 um, mm. each year. So that's a, a pretty significant um, donation to, you know, to our back to our community. Um, I've sponsored like um, T ball teams, um, other sport organizations. Um, whenever anybody is doing like a raffle, I always, you know, give a gift certificate, um, to them, um, in order to do that. Or like when they have, um, plays and stuff like that, and they're looking for advertisers, I always, you know, help out and put in an ad and, and that sort of thing. So. Yeah. And all, all of those things get your name, your school's name out into the community, right? And that's ultimately what we're what we're looking to do, right? You know, whether you, you know, want to have a school of 5,000 students or you've got two students and you want five, you five more, right? You have to get your name. People have to know who you are. And so all of these things help that, right? Um, you know, I know a lot of schools that do birthday parties, kids' birthday parties, Right. <clears throat> And I've always found, you know, sure, like, wh- and uh, whatever the price is, like, you know, kid's birthday party, it's going to cost this much, whatever, and you get a cake and you get this or you get that, you know, sure, you can go to your local grocery store and just buy a sheet cake and bring it and the kids have a cake and great, but you can go to your local bakery and talk to them and explain, again, going, walking in in person, talking face to face and explain like we do kids birthday parties you know i want to i would like to set up a relationship with you because let's face it anything any business exchange has to go both ways because if it doesn't they're not interested in being involved right and so when schools that i know of that go into a bakery and create a, a relationship with uh, a, an owner and say hey we're going to contract with you and I don't contract, I don't mean fill out a contract, but like, we're, we're going to come to you for all of our cakes for our birthday parties. Um, can you give us a deal? Because we also want to make sure that, you know, we give out business cards to all of the parents that know that this cake is from this place. And, you know, the hope is that it's going to bring more business to you in exchange for us getting a slightly, you know, better deal on a cake. And even if there isn't a deal on the cake, you getting a local business cake as opposed to going to your local Hannaford or Price Chopper or whatever to get a cake means a lot more to that local business. And you have already started fostering that relationship. Um, and I think those sorts of things can't be overlooked, right? 
Um, and remembering that it's a, it's a two way street. Like, yes, we want something from them, but we want to give something back to them as well. Um, Craig, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that that's important. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm racking my brain a little bit, thinking back on all the things I've done. And the thing that I consistently do the most to connect with my community is teach for free in, in the schools, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll go and be a guest PE teacher for a week or, or whatever. And doing that for 15, 16 years, you know, I have a pretty good relationship. But also kids in, in at least this town, Exeter, where I am now, they see me once a week every year from kindergarten till the, till they're going to high school. So regardless of if they ever train with me in a longer term thing, they all know who I am. So, mm. you know, the long running joke, if you ever come to visit me here is we can't go out to eat right in town because you're never going to get to order anything because people just come up, you know, um, the amount of times so that people just point at me on the sidewalk and yell the karate guy. Right. Well, I'm not the only martial artist in town. I'm not the only school in town, but they all know who I am because I rush over to the school whenever they ask for help or whenever mm -hmm. they need something to the point where, you know, one of the schools was hard up for substitute teachers and they asked me if I would be a sub. So I subbed in for their PE program for like, uh, I'd say a year. I was in mm -hmm. and out teaching their PE classes, not martial arts, but they knew that I could run a class and I could be in a gym and I could command a group and, and do what I need to do. So I've always found ways to say yes to whatever is asked of me. Mm. And in return, you know, I know that if I ask them, then the answer will be yes back. It's, it's one of those things where I don't always look for an immediate, Oh, can you hand out my business card or can you do this? But, um, a great example, actually, Andrew and Kelly, you both came to my school in August. We did the skill builder day that I do. And um, one of the guys who presented was the wrestling coach for the high school. Yep. Yep. Right. Well, he came in and did that. No problem, because I've been teaching in his PE classes for 15 years. Right. So he'll come in, pop in and teach and like make an extra connection and share something else just because, you know, he and I are friends from so many years of working together. And, and I think that that's important. It's not always a, an initial, what can I get from this business or this place at this time? It's what can I do to help them? And when the time comes, maybe if I need something, they'll, they'll be able to, to help me out. But the, the process for me is always from the heart. It's just, how can I help? What can I do? The stronger the community, the the better the place for everyone to live. So what can I do to step up and help? Yeah. Kelly, have you had any other examples of that or stuff that you've done or seen? Um, what I do is um, when we level up for our next belts, they everyone gets homework. And one of the things in order to get the students involved is in February, we do a um, kindness ninja mission. And they have to do um, nice things, two nice things, I think it is, to like somebody in their school, somebody in their community, um, somebody at home, you know, that sort of thing. And so it kind of like, starts them thinking also about taking care of their community and you know and then you know like you say you're going into a business like i've had you know students will bring you know um it's going to sound like a cliche but uh coffee and donuts to the to police department you know <laughs> um you know sending letters saying thank you and you know so that you know even so i don't have to do it all but yeah you know, the students are doing it and it's like they're seeing, OK, it's not just, you know, I'm trying to get more students. It's we're all learning how, you know, to be together as as a community. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I love that because it shows that you as a school that you care right about the community. Uh, and you want to be a part of the community and you want them to be a part of your program as well. Um, you know, another thing that I was thinking of is, you know, what other things do we as martial arts schools often need or use 
Uh, and it's usually not all schools, but many schools get their own merchandise, T-shirts, sweatshirts with their school logo and things like that. And so making a connection to a, a local T-shirt shop, you know, here in town, Bees Tees has been our sponsor for uh, free training day slash Marshall Summit for the last three, four years. And yes, they absolutely get money, right? We, we are bringing them business, but in exchange, you know, if you're a martial arts school, connect with a local t-shirt shop and say, you know, we would like to, you know, exclusively have our stuff printed by you, no discount, but like, we're going to bring our stuff to you and you set up a relationship with them. And then when you have your special event, your, your breakathon, for example, which you're taking that money and you're donating it to charity or whatever you, because you have a relationship with this business, you can go to them and say, Hey, this is the event that we're doing. We're donating money to charity. We want to be able to give t-shirts to all of our attendees, which they're going to, you know, that's going to cost money, but because we have a relationship with you, would you be willing to, you know, give us a discount on them because it's for charity or whatever. If you don't have any relationship with them, and you just walk in and say, yes, I'm doing a breakathon and we are trying to raise money. They might give you a discount, but they'll be way more likely to if you have a relationship, if you have fostered this connection with this part of the community. So you can you can imagine at the breakathon, one of the things we need the most of is boards. So yep, we have, um, there's a local uh, place that I buy all my boards from um, for all of my events. And so when um, the breakathon comes around, um, they sell me the boards I need for that event at um, their cost. Yeah, exactly. So and that's, that's exactly, that's what, exactly what, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, so one of the sponsors this year was, uh, a yoga studio in town, or it, it's not a yoga studio. It's wellness. It's called Everglow wellness. And Abby Hoy had been hired by the owner to come in and teach a women's self-defense course. And so Abby knew the owner had already fostered this relationship with her. Abby was paid money to come in and teach this, excuse me, this women's self-defense course. So when Abby went to her and said, hey, we are looking for some, you know, for some help with this martial arts event, because Abby already had a relationship with her, the woman, the owner, Ashley, was like, absolutely, this sounds great. What can I do to help? But again, if we didn't, if Abby hadn't worked at fostering that relationship with that business, it would have been a lot harder to do. Right. And so that's what, you know, if there's a big takeaway from this episode, it's you absolutely can run your martial arts school and close your walls and you do your own thing and, and you can do that. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But if you want to be more known within your community, you have to work at it, right? It doesn't just, you know, Craig, you've been teaching in the schools for 15 years. Yeah. It, it doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen. Right. 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 And I think that it's, you know, the, ultimately at the end of the day, one of the things that I, one of my goals, when I list out my goals for what I want black belts with me to be is, is, you know, active in their community. I want them to be engaged. Right. So if I want them to do that, I have to show them how, and I have to lead that way. I have to, I, they need to see me in the community and out there and participating and doing all these things. And I think that that's important. If you're going to, if you're going to expect, you know, I know some martial arts schools, especially at Summit, when I was talking to so many school owners about curriculum and expectations for their, their students, um, a few of them said that they have, you know, they want community service. And I said, okay, well, how do you foster that, right? Like, how do you make that happen? And um, they said, well, they go find it. I also expect my students to have community service, but I give them five or six opportunities every year to do it. And it's, mm. you know, and, and I think that that's important if for, you know, a local thing like that, whether it's maybe they're helping me, you know, in February, I do an event for Big Brothers, Big Sisters of New Hampshire for their martial arts for mentoring program and, and trying to raise money and raise awareness for that program. Um, and so 
if they're put if I have students who need community service hours and they're putting in time helping with the flyers and putting the flyers up and and coming in early and cleaning like that all counts for that or are they going out in December and helping raise money for a local children's fund for them to have warm clothes this winter right like they they'll have all sorts of outlets that'll appeal to maybe their personality but it's also something that pushes them forward and so I think that there's there's obviously the 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 intrinsic value to me as a business owner, right? I get more students in the door. That's a great thing. But on top of that, there's the walk the walk, talk the talk kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I think I think that that's important. So to see people be engaged, to see for people to see their instructors be engaged in a thing is is important. And I think it's very really powerful. Yeah. If, any thoughts, Kelly? Um, that's, uh, you know, part of the reason why I set up the breakathon the way it is, because even though it's hard because students, kids are raising money for so many things throughout the year, but I tell them, I said, this is the one time you're doing the work, not for yourself. You're going out there and you're doing all this work and you're giving it to somebody else. You know, it's not for new uniforms. It's not for a trip. It's not for, you know, any of these things. And I tell them, you know, make sure that they know that, um, you know, that you are putting yourself out there um, just for the pure desire of helping somebody out. There's, mm -hmm. they don't win any prizes. A lot of those places, like you win little prizes for the highest, yeah. you know, highest one. We don't do any of that. Um mm -hmm. You know, and I and I cap it. I tell them they can only break up to um, twenty boards, but they will. Some of them will still continue to raise more money than mm -hmm. what is required, even though you know they're not even going to get to break those boards. You know, mm -hmm. they will share those boards with another student who, you know, didn't raise as much or whatever. So, you know, it's it's a drive to, you know just to give to somebody else. Yeah, no, that's great. So the other thing that I thought we could talk about is things that our, as a group, our schools can do together in the community, right? Obviously the breakathon, like that kind of counts because you're involving the whole community, but it's at your school. I'm assuming anyway, you hold it at your school or, you know, you hold it at a location, but what about things like, as a school, we're going to go walk this 5K and we're all going to wear T-shirts with our school logo because it's a 5K raising money for whatever. We're not even running it. We're just going to do it because someone else is doing But we get ourselves out into the community. Um, that gets our school name out there and they see that we're involved. Again, there's nothing wrong with just staying in your own school and doing your own thing. But I think we you can't discount the... Uh, goodwill that your school can gain by going out into the community. Um, do either of you do anything like that? I think we've got two projects probably that's going to happen next year. Um, somebody did the um, Spartan Beast oh, and yeah. wanted to grab, you know, some people together um, and go as, as a team. So I said, yeah, put it together. And I said, I'll get t-shirts made and everything else. And another thing that somebody wants to do is um, the penguin plunge. Mm -hmm. So I figured, you know, we would do the same thing. I, you know, make t-shirts up and, you know, so that they all, and I think that happens in several different locations. So, you know, for the penguin can, plunge, rather than getting t-shirts, you should get like winter jackets. <laughs> or towels. <laughs> or like wind zaps. Yes. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, Craig, how about yourself? Do you uh, is there anything that your school does out in the community as a group? Yeah, so re I mean, the, the thing we do the most of is uh, that charity I was talking about that raises money for to give out vouchers for warm clothes. Um, they do a few fundraisers a year. One of them is a duck race. So there's always, you know, a bunch of my kids in their uniforms downtown selling tickets and things like that. And then um, they do a gingerbread house competition and like a festival of trees kind of thing where you can, you know, 
sponsor a tree and you put a bunch on it and there's an auction, right? There's things like that. Um, but what we'll do is we'll have kids down there in their uniforms um, selling out little cheap toys or whatever, and all the money goes to the, the charity. So we'll go out there in our uniforms and we'll jump in and help out. We've had kids help out with the holiday parade before. Maybe they're, you know, helping direct people or whatever, you know, and usually um, it's things like that where we're not necessarily we're not the ones running it, sponsoring it. We don't necessarily have a team per se, but we've been asked to help staff an event or something like that. And we'll, we'll do it that way. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this was great. Is there anything that, that we didn't touch on that you want to make sure we talk about? I think we kind of missed uh, if people don't know, even know where to start, right? Like where do I even start looking for things like that? you know, what organizations might benefit, um, you know, I, and I think that that might be something beneficial to throw out there. So a couple examples for, for people, um, local PTOs or PTAs are always looking for, for help or fundraising or things like that. Um, libraries. So we do a thing here where if you have a public library card and you show it to me, you, you know, you get a discount on your membership or vice versa. Like it'll, you know, we, we try to help them out in any way we can because libraries are important too. Um, but those are two pretty public things that benefit a community that are kind of easy entry points if you don't have an idea of where to start. Mm, that's a good point. What about you, Kelly? Um, Any, anything we didn't that we didn't hit on that you want to make sure we talk about? I don't think so. Okay, great. I yeah, think the... Um, the other thing is that you contact your local chamber of commerce, right? Yeah. There's always events going on in your town or in your city, if you're in a city uh, and your chamber of commerce can, can help with that stuff. Um, or if you're just looking for volunteer things, contact your local rotary, you know, rotary is great for that stuff as well. And see if there's something that you can get involved with. So. Yeah. I excellent. think the chamber, like you said, is good. I mean, don't just contact them, but be a member of them. It, oh, for sure. Yeah. If, if you have a school in that town, for sure. So excellent. Thank you guys for joining me. This was great. Anytime. Thank you. Um, if, if you, like I mentioned at the top of the show, if you're new to the show, go check out whistlekick martial arts radio.com for anything about all of our episodes are, our, our 970 plus episodes. I think this is going to be uh nine, seven, three, I think nine, seven, five. I think it's nine, seven, five. 25 more episodes and we're at a thousand. Um, so that's pretty amazing. And then check out all the stuff Whistlekick does. Whistlekick.com where you can buy apparel. Um, you can buy training programs, as I mentioned. You can you can uh, purchase um, our weekend event, All In Weekend, which we host in April uh, in central Vermont. Um, all sorts of stuff that you can find there. Sparring gear. Um, so go check it out. And it's constantly rotating. We always have new stuff showing up in our store. So uh, feel free to check that out. And if you need to contact me, if you have any questions for me, you can always reach out to me, Andrew at whistlekick.com. You don't have to reach out to Craig or Kelly, but if you want to, you can send it to me. Or I happen to know Craig is now, in quotes, official with Craig at whistlekick.com. That's right. Whoa. Uh, and if you reach out to me with any feedback, I'm just going to forward it to Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, we can try and do the outro together. I don't know how it'll go. Oh, Kelly's like, oh, no. we should have practiced. We should have practiced. Uh, until next time. Train, train hard. Train hard. Smile, Smile and, and have, have a great, a great day. day. <laughs> High five. <laughs>